Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's chemistry class. Uh, we're going to be going over limiting and excess reactants today. So make sure you're following along in your note packets so that if you have any questions you ask tomorrow. So a big question that we've not really addressed since we've been talking about stoichiometry is this. Why do chemical reactions stop? So what is it that makes a chemical reaction stop? Uh, well, it kind of makes sense that if we're adding in ingredients, which we call reactants, then whenever we run out of one of our reactants, we run out of product. Okay, and so the easiest way to think about that is pretend that you are a chef and you are making some food. It doesn't matter what it is. We'll just use sandwiches since that's like probably the most common. So you have lots of bread, you have lots of meat, you have lots of cheese, all of the ingredients you need to make a sandwich. But what ends up happening is... It's a very busy day, you keep putting out more sandwiches and more sandwiches, but you run out of bread, okay? Once you've run out of bread, you've basically got to stop making sandwiches, unless you're going to invent a sandwich that doesn't need some form of bread in order to work, okay? So it's the same thing with chemical reactions. So we have all of these reactants, okay? And so whenever we have a collection of reactants, if we run out of one of them, our reaction will stop. So what do we call that? Well, the reactant that runs out, that's called our limiting reactant. Anything that is left over after the reaction stops, we call those excess reactants. So to use the same analogy, you still had plenty of meat and you still had plenty of cheese, those would be in excess. Your limiting reactant would have been the bread, whereas your excess reactants would have been other things. Okay? So, uh, how are we going to do this? Well, what I want you to do is write out this equation. All right, so we've got N2 plus 3H2 yields two NH3s. All right, and so that's going to be the equation we use. And I'm going to show you a picture. Okay? In this picture, there are going to be, you know, some nitrogens, there are going to be some hydrogens, and we're going to be making some products. And what I want you to write out then is, which thing do you think is our limiting reactant and our excess reactant, and then how can you tell? So that picture looks like this. Take a look at my reaction. All right, so these guys are my N2s, these are my H2s, and then these are my NH3s, okay? So before the reaction, I have three nitrogen molecules, I have three hydrogen molecules, I make two ammonia molecules, and so which thing did I run out of first? Answer, I ran out of hydrogen, okay? So... How can I tell that I ran out of hydrogen? Well, look at in my product, the hydrogens are all used up. And what do I just have floating around on the other side? I have all of these extra nitrogen molecules. So even though my equation, you know, is sort of, you know, mixing nitrogen and hydrogen to make ammonia, um, I could, if I have the wrong ratio, end up with extra stuff. And that's what limiting reactant and excess reactant questions are all about, is what are you going to run out of and what are you going to have extra of? It's the same thing with sandwiches. So using my analogy again, which I'm going to keep using, uh, this would have been the bread. I would have ran out of this first. And I would have had all of this extra meat and cheese and other things, okay? So that's what a limiting reactant and an excess reactant are. Let's see how we do with a different type of question. All right, we're making hamburgers now. So here are the questions we're going to be looking for. How many hamburgers can you make? What do you have left over? What is the limiting reactant? Which are your excess reactants? So let's say this is my equation for making a hamburger. All right, I've got meat, one piece of meat, plus two buns, plus cheese, plus two tomatoes. That's what makes one hamburger. So if I give you the following ingredients, how many hamburgers can you make? And what am I going to have extra of? So if you can, figure that out. Pause it before you actually move on. The answer, I can make three hamburgers. Okay? And what do I run out of? Well, technically, 
I ran out of meat first. Okay, what do I have excess or leftover? I have all of these things left over. Okay, I have two leftover buns, I have one leftover piece of tomato, and I have three extra pieces of cheese. So in this question, what was my limiting reactant? My limiting reactant was the meat. That's the thing I ran out of first. So that would be my limiting reactant. What were my excess reactants? Everything else. I had extra of everything else. These are my excess reactants. Let's try another question. Each sandwich needs to have the following. Okay, so this is my chemical reaction. Two slices of bread, three pieces of lunch meat, one slice of cheese. What am I giving you? I'm giving you this. I'm giving you six slices of bread, 12 pieces of meat, five slices of cheese. How many sandwiches can you make? So answer these questions. How many sandwiches can you make? What do you have left over? And then which is your limiting reactant and your excess reactants? So again, try to work this out. If I give you this amount of stuff, how many sandwiches could you make? The answer. I can make three sandwiches. What would I have left over? I would have three pieces of meat and two slices of cheese. So what was my limiting reactant? My limiting reactant was the bread. I ran out of bread first. What were my excess reactants? These were my excess reactants. I had three extra pieces of lunch meat and two extra pieces of cheese. And that is how limiting reactant and excess reactant questions work. One of the things you will be running out of, and then you'll have extra of other stuff, okay? And so limiting or excess.